Sup, compassionate people. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a snippet from the most recent episode of the Joe Rogan podcast, Joe Rogan Experience, featuring his guest, Cameron Haynes. Oh, kitty cat. In it, Rogan makes a bunch of claims. <laughs> One of the most egregious being almost all vegans go back to eating meat, which is, we'll get into that. So let's go ahead and watch along. Let's go ahead and start the video. You guys watch along with me and we'll go ahead and pause and make commentary where we need to and fix the things that are incorrect where they need to be fixed. The Joe Rogan experience. And that's, I think that's the special bond hunters have with their food. Right, so hunters <laughs> have that connection. <clears throat> Look, as a former hunter myself from a family of hunters, I can tell you that there's this whole idea that there's a spiritual thing about the hunt and when you take, when you harvest the animal or take the life of the animal. And it's for the most part all bullshit. There's some ritual, there's handing down of things learned and stuff like that that kind of flips some of those switches that we uh, have internally as humans, evolutionary, you know, type stuff, tribal type things. Uh, but that can be experienced in many other ways. And turning it in this whole almost religious experience, as I've heard Joe Rogan himself do many times on his podcast and others in real life, is fetishizing the whole, the whole idea of, of, of hunting and, and that it was this thing that ancient man did and they go into all this stuff. We're not, it's, it's all complete nonsense. This is what drives me crazy. And I don't, I don't want to go back, rehash everything we've ever talked about. But I saw this video today. Who had it up? Um, anyway, these vegans were set up in front of this, I guess, where you get hamburgers. Oh, that big guy the bursting big guy. through the line? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when do hunters ever like get confrontational and violent with people who don't want to eat meat? Well... You see, Mr. Cameron Haynes, that's a false equivalency. And the reason is you don't get angry at people for eating vegetables because there's no harm being done. Okay. You seem, and we've heard, we all vegans have heard these arguments more times than you can ever imagine. We've heard the dumbest shit you could ever come up with. We've heard it and you're probably going to say it. We have a problem with you eating others, other beings, because they experience the same fears, both emotional and physical as you or I. A plant does not. And to say that they are equivalent and to say that your perspective should be respected and your perspective and where you're at is just another point of view that we should be respecting and not protesting is complete horseshit. When does that happen? Well, they think somehow or another by blocking this burger stand that they're changing the world. They're just trying to be activists. You know, they're trying to get a message out. And most of them will quit. They're going to quit veganism and they're going to start eating meat again because of their health. Yeah. That's, that's the truth. It's a no, Mr. Joe Rogan, that is not the truth. There are very few vegans who actually go back. And let's be clear here. Veganism is not a diet. You seem to think it is. A lot of other people seem to think it is. It's not. Uh, some, you might want to say lifestyle, but that's not the reality either. It's a moral and ethical position we take against harming others, harming animals. And some people want to extend that to humans. That's fine. I agree. We're animals. But for the most part, it's about animals and not hurting them as far as is possible and practicable. And I'm sure you're going to extend your argument to go into the impractical of how we're not being, let's just get there. I, I know it's going to happen. Some ridiculous number. Oh, wait, wait. And there are no reasons that you have to eat meat whatsoever. None. Zero. Nada. Uh, in fact, what you'll be getting into, the Game Changers, the, the movie that just came out, they were able to show some of the archaeological finds. They were able to show in the Game Changers that gladiators ate a plant-based diet because they healed much quicker from it. It made them faster. It made them stronger. And it was well known in the ancient world. And we're just now finding this out. But, you know... Take your signs from Joe Rogan instead. This, what number, I, I think they said the number of uh, vegans and vegetarians that eat meat when they're drunk is something outrageous. <laughs> it's like close to 90%. Yeah. Well, no but kidding. How many, how many vegans wind up quitting and eating meat? I well, wonder if they've ever done a study on that. This is like a big thing because, you know, there's been a movement, sort of a movement, and people have different success rates with being a vegan, but Cam Newton, who is a quarterback of the Carolina Panthers, big dude, 6'6", 250, 260. Okay. 
He's bringing up the Cam Newton thing of the Carolina Panthers. That was an article that was going around for a while, and it was so biased. It was deep, deep in, in North Carolina country, you know, where Adam Wag is, they own it all. If anybody has ever been to Tar Heel or you've been anywhere south, you'll see the hog cesspools everywhere, just cathos like you wouldn't believe. I, I remember in Tar Heel, where it's the largest pig slaughterhouse in the world, or at least it was at the time I had been there. Th over 30,000 pigs a day were going in and coming out chopped up and packaged. And while we were there, there's a chicken slaughterhouse down the road that chicken transport trucks were just going all day long. And they had transported so many chickens on these trucks that the feathers had covered the ground like snow. It looked like it had snowed. There was just feathers as far as you could see across the ground. Cause when you first get there, you're like, what the, what is this? And you, then it, it, you clicks in and you realize, oh my God. Yeah. What's up little? My little skeevy. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So the whole uh, Cam Newton thing is a bunch of nonsense. It's been proven over and over again in Olympic, in Olympic athletes, NFL athletes, any athlete you can bring up, it has been shown and proven scientifically that plant-based diets both repair and keep injury from happening. They also allow faster recovery periods in between workouts because surprise, surprise, our bodies run on carbohydrates. 250, 260, he went vegan and he cannot get healthy. He cannot, he's been injured. He's, I mean, the face of the franchise, probably a hundred million dollar contract. Um, I mean, made it to the Super Bowl, but since just been on a decline and it, it's like almost hand in hand with the change into vegan. Well, you know that guy, Dr. Sean Baker, he's the yeah, advocate yeah. of the that carnivore guy. diet. He yeah. marks uh, all these people that were in originally in that Game Changers documentary that James Cameron put out. Yeah. A shit ton of them quit before the movie came out and they had to pull them out of the movie mm. because they were vegan and because of health reasons they had to quit. Right. It's, it's an indoctrination movie. And yeah. it's also... Again, that's not how it works. Not at all. Veganism is not a diet. And two, I'd like to see proof of this. Where, where, are, where is the shitload... That's a Joe Rogan measurement for quantity. <laughs> where is the shitload of people... I personally measure in fuckloads myself. But where is this shitload of people? I haven't heard anything about this. You'd think, if anything, all the anti-vegan trolls would be lining up the, the names and putting them out there for us, but we haven't heard a thing. I've seen nothing about it. Yeah. It's also, it's in extremely biased, and it's not focusing on all of the various problems that people have. It's only focused on the positive aspects mm -hmm. of it and distorting the reality of those positive right. messages, particularly like the strong man who's on a fuckload of steroids. <laughs> yeah, they you know, forget that they part. They forget that part. Yeah. And, and then, whoa, he's talking about Patrick Bobauman, Bobauman, however you want to say his name. He's not on steroids, not at all. In fact, if he was, we would see evidence of it. And we see none. Uh, if you want to learn more about that kind of thing, you can look at Vegan Gains videos on YouTube. He actually breaks down quite a few uh, where he can show just in pictures or video of them that so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so were on steroids or not. Uh, there's dead giveaways to the trained eye and he has the trained eye for it because he's never done it and he's 100% for natural bodybuilding and against steroid usage. Um, I'll try and remember to put a link to his channel, but I'm sure most people know about him by now. Joe Rogan's just coming up with whatever he can to try and cut down everything to fit his worldview. And it's sad. But I think how against he is against veganism is the reason that he will end up being vegan eventually because he's exposed to all the information on a regular basis. And as vegan athletes rise and as Olympic ve vegan athletes rise, which are becoming the norm in all specialized sports, in all organized sports that are played at a high level, Plant-based diets are what these athletes are on. It's the best way for them to recover, the best way for them to get the energy they need. And Joe Rogan will see this more and more over time until one day it will snap and he'll get it. But let's keep going. Right, yeah. and, and then all these other athletes, like these, these you're not talking, and even the strong man, he's not like a, an elite strong man. You're not yeah. talking about some, like when I had Robert Oberst in here, right. he's like, everybody eats the same shit. He's like meat and yeah. rice. Like they eat meat. Yeah. Like all those strong men eat the same thing. The real strong men, the ones right. who actually win the competitions. 
What do you got? He's not a real strongman, Patrick Bo Bauman? Let's cut to some clips. He has made so many records, so many records. He has beaten so many records and set so many records, yet he's not a real strongman? What, what, what competitions, Joe? You didn't even name any competitions. You're just making shit up. Stop making shit up to fit your worldview. This is what you're supposed to be against. I, I do take into account the guests you have on your show, the point of view. I've been watching you for like a decade online, uh, listening and watching. I don't know. I, I just expect more from you than to... What do you got, Jamie? It's uh, very controversial research that came <laughs> out, but it's uh, a very repeated number of 84% of vegans and vegetarians end up going back to eating meat of, at some level. Yeah, right, bef right before they die. Folks, <clears throat> we're omnivores. We're yeah. omnivores. Okay. First of all, this so-called study is complete BS, and I'll leave links to it below so you can assess it yourself. It's not peer-reviewed. It doesn't really come from anything. It was an online, I'll have to look it up, but I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly, back when I had this argument with somebody two years ago or three years ago, it's from an online, uh, British online newspaper where they asked their readers to pretty much submit to, to this test thing they had, and it's, it's just a bunch of bullshit. Complete bullshit. It just gets shopped around because it fits the narrative that he wants and what a lot of other people want. They don't want to be inconvenienced by, God forbid, not killing somebody, despite the fact that there are more analogs available that taste exactly the same with no cholesterol than what they're used to. Okay, and number two, he says, we're omnivores. Fucking no, we are not omnivores. The saliva of humans is alkaline to help break down plant materials and glucose and carbohydrates. The saliva of omnivores and carnivores is acidic to help break down meat and they have shorter digestive tracts to help it pass through more quickly. Herbivores, frugivores have longer digestive tracts and draw out all the nutrients as it slowly goes through the bowels. What about these canines? Oh, you can't even see my canines. Jesus, look at that. That's not a very good canine, is it? But what about the canines? Well, what about the canines on so many other herbiv herbivorous animals, including many of our ancestors, monkeys and apes? And one of the most damning proofs, the biggest piece of evidence that we are not carnivores or omnivores, that we are in fact herbivorous, is our arteries get clogged by cholesterol. Our bodies make all the cholesterol we need. No matter what that amount is, it is varies. In fact, one of the lowest recorded cholesterols was five. Yes, a cholesterol of five was a man in the military in the in the navy was a man in the was a man in the navy in the fifties. I believe it was five. It was like five or seven or something ridiculously low, and he was perfectly fine and perfectly healthy, and he just had a genetic predisposition for low cholesterol, proving that it didn't make a difference. It was just what his body did and how it regulated things. But we do know that bringing in outside cholesterol into our bodies which only comes from animal products, totally clogs up our arteries. Now, do the arteries of, of actual omnivores or carnivores anywhere else get clogged? The answer is no, 100% no. Where do we see arteries getting clogged from cholesterol from animal products? We see it in both herbivores and frugivores in the lab. Tests done on monkeys, apes, rats, mice, rabbits, and all kinds of other unfortunate creatures that ended up in that situation, all when fed animal products end up having blocked arteries, heart attacks, strokes, all that. Because it's not what they're supposed to be eating. Not at all, not what, not at all whatsoever. And that is exactly the same with us. So Joe Rogan, you're wrong. And when you get on your Lipitor or if you're already on it or whenever you're having your heart issues or you have a blockage, you're gonna be seeking us out. We, we exist better. We are more healthy on an animal and vegetable diet. Yeah. And if you don't want to kill animals, please eat eggs, eat oysters, eat shrimp and lobsters. They're fucking heartless, soulless little monsters that live at the bottom of the ocean. Right. But if you want to be healthy. If you, if you don't want to hurt animals, he says to eat eggs or oysters or shrimp and lobsters and crabs. They're soulless monsters that live at the bottom of the ocean. No, they're living beings they just don't look like you or i or cats or dogs you just you just don't want to admit to yourself that they have feelings and the most shocking thing of all with say a shrimp or 
a lobster or a crab is their systems don't have the same kind of mechanisms as ours where they'll go into shock and their central nervous system will shut down so that they won't feel all the pain of something bad happening. Theirs heightens and gets worse. So when you're boiling them alive or however you're deciding to kill them horribly, steaming them, they are experiencing all that for the entire time, 100% and it's being amplified. Your excuses mean nothing. And Joe, let me tell you, there's no good way to farm eggs whatsoever. There's no such thing as free range. You believe all these humane lies and I'm sure there's more to come. So let's keep going. Ocean. Right. But if you want to be healthy, just eating only vegetables is a fucking hard road. Yeah. It's a hard road. And this idea that you're going to save the world, listen, large scale, large scale agriculture is fucking terrible for the environment. It's terrible. Mm -hmm. You want to like... They, the, Yes, large-scale agriculture is terrible for the environment. And guess where most of that large-scale agricultural plant production goes? It goes into, you betcha, beef production. And also other livestock, like chickens and goats and pigs. But primarily, the majority goes to beef cattle. It takes 16 pounds of plant material to make one pound of cow flesh. That's a 16 to 1 conversion ratio. Now, if we were to just stop growing crops and then feeding those crops to animals, and we just ate crops, there would be no 15 times the waste, basically. You understand? You pick it up what I'm putting down here, Joe? They, all of our agricultural, when they talk about greenhouse gases, we talked about this the other day, 9% of all uh, of uh, all greenhouse gases is because of agriculture. Less than half of that is because of meat. Less than half of that is bullshit. You're just making shit up again. You're making shit up. That is not true. When you account for all the fuel for the tractors to plant and harvest and fertilize and do everything else and the fertilizer itself that's made from petroleum products and everything else and then those then all those grains and soy and everything else is transported to a facility that manufactures it into feed and then the feed is transported to places and that's transported and then that's transported. When you actually take into account all those things and the water usage and getting the water and where it's taking it from, it actually equals 51% of climate change. 51% of climate change is caused by animal agriculture. 51%. All transport in the entire world is 19%. And it actually might even be more now all these years later. There hasn't been an updated study, and I can guarantee it's more. So again, Joe, you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Just talking out of your ass to your audience that will willingly accept it without a second thought because they want to hate veganism and they want to feel better. They don't want to feel like shit on their drive to work listening to the JRE, the Joe Rogan Experience Podcast. They want to feel, oh, hell, I'm right about everything. I can get that double bacon cheeseburger. You of all people should know about complacency the lies of industry and all kinds of conspiracy stuff that you've always touted and talked about, but here you are on the wrong side of history. It's because of beef. Elk? Yeah. How much is that? Oh, man. It's yeah. fucking zero. Yeah. You, you have way, if you just eat elk, you have way less. If you just eat elk. And where's this elk coming from, Joe? Well, I think what Joe is trying to say is because he goes on his hunting trips and gets an elk, and he's talked about this before, or a deer or some other poor unfortunate animal that he killed to prove his manhood, he can feed his family for a year. And he seems to think that he has a zero carbon footprint. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and do a few calculations while I edit this video to find out because I know for a fact that he takes trips around the country and around the world on jets with all of his equipment, sometimes with his family, with his friends, and he pays for them too. So his carbon footprint must be fucking huge to take one of those trips. Less impact on the greenhouse gases than you do if you're a vegetarian, and that's right. a fact. Right. If you're eating grain, not only that, you're eating grain, man, you're responsible for a fuckload of death, whether you like oh, it or yeah, not. Oh, yeah, for sure. Those monstrous rabbits. combines, yeah, those rabbits, indiscriminate- deer fawns, yeah. um, mice. Uh, Forget about insects. Birds, yeah. And then the pesticides, the displacement of wildlife. You're not supposed to have enormous fields filled with fucking corn. Right. And grain, wheat, and all that shit. That's not normal. Yeah. That's not healthy. Yeah. There's definitely animals dying from that, which, I, you know. Okay. Now, this is something I know a lot about. I looked that study up, but 
It averages about six-ish, six to eight animals per hectare. That's the unit of measurement that's used widely in agriculture. It ends up being about six animals per hectare. And that's one of the only studies done about it. But I can tell you from experience and, and being around animal ag, being around animal ag and vegetable ag, if you want to call it that, being around, I can tell you being around agriculture my entire life, growing up in a small town, farm, all that stuff, that there are really, you don't find any animals dead after at all. Any that would be in there, and let's face it, large, large fields of corn or wheat or soy, they're not habitats for these animals. Some may go in there and eat, but for the most part, animals really aren't going in there except for cover. And you can bet your ass when a giant thresher starts up from a fucking mile and a half, two miles away, they're not sticking around to find out what the fuck the noise is. They're running the opposite direction. They run like crazy. You say you're a hunter, but you know what happens when you step on a fucking stick. The animals scatter and run two miles away, completely fucking petrified of you. From one former hunter to your hunting ass now, you know better. You're not thinking about your, you're, you are not thinking about your arguments coherently whatsoever. You're just thinking about the goal you want to get to. You're just thinking about the goal you have to discredit everything you've just heard about veganism instead of using your fucking brain to think about your experiences and comparing them with the new information. It's called cognitive dissonance, Joe. But for us to live, animals are going to die. Yeah. No matter how you want to look at it, at some point, whether it was to build your house or build the road you use to get to work or if or the fields that you eat your your salad and, and corn and and wheat from, animals are dying for us to live. That's just the, that's just how it works. You cannot live on this earth and not have animals die because of that. And I the old why bother if you can't be perfect. Well, we've never heard that one before, have we, guys? Well, <laughs> for us to live, others must die. That seems to be a credo, especially here in America. I, I, you don't really hear people say that often in other places. Look, is the world perfect? No. But you also got to take into account that the world is not vegan, not even anywhere goddamn close to it right now. If we were living in a vegan world, we would be finding every way possible to minimize our impact on other beings, the environment around us, and each other. But we're not at that point yet. Now, you can say that certain things wouldn't be possible. We can have that conversation. Uh, I would pretty much refute anything you can bring up. I've never heard one good thing, you know, saying, oh, the, the, the deaths from harvesting and planting and fertilizing and, 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 and you know, plants. That still kills animals. Okay. It kills far less than 6,000 animals a second dying right now for anim dying, dying for burgers and steaks and pork chops and bacon. But you are correct. We wouldn't agree with that. And there's a way around it. It's called indoor farming. Indoor vertical farming is a variation of it, but it's already being done around the world, being powered by solar and geothermal and other renewable resources. They don't even need soil to grow it. And that means they don't need to use pesticides because there's no insects or other animals to get to it. No, no one has to be killed or hurt. It's in a sealed environment given the exact nutrients and light cycles it needs to become the best plant and, and completely organic that it can be. So you're wrong again. You don't know what you're talking about. You haven't researched a damn thing and it's infuriating. And I like that these people that are vegans are doing this and they think this way because they care because they don't want suffering They want these animals to live. Mm -hmm. I look I don't want factory farming. I think it's terrible It mm -hmm. doesn't none of that appeals to me at all when I see chickens stuffed into cages like that yeah. I don't want to have anything to do with that. I don't want to I don't, I want to boy cat every step of the way when I see pigs Stuffed into those cages to, next to each other shitting on the floor. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have any part of that I want to boycott all of that with same thing with beef same thing with anything that's factory farm. Yeah, but that's not what we're doing Joe the problem isn't factory farming. You're believing the humane lie, the humane washing of, of the animal ag industry that has become so pervasive through 
grocery stores like Whole Foods selling this lie that there is some right way to do the wrong thing. And the wrong thing is hurting others. There is no good way to hurt others. There never will be. There's no humane way to kill somebody, except for possibly euthanasia, but we have never talked to somebody who's experienced that, so we don't know for sure, but that would be the best way to put somebody, that would be the best way to kill somebody, but you can't eat them then, can you? And you shouldn't want to. <laughs> You see those images? That's 98% of farming. 98% Joe, 98% of farming is factory farming. There are no, there's no amazing, beautiful places where anything humane happens. And even on the small local farms, depending on their output quantity of chickens or cows or pigs or whatever other creatures they're raising, if they go past a certain threshold, they have to take their animals to the same USDA facilities, to the same USDA certified facilities that other so-called factory farm animals go to and they get their throats slit and their heads hammered and gassed and all kinds of other methods and boiled alive the same exact ways. But even if they don't go that far and the local farmer does the humane thing, do you know what the humane thing looks like, Joe? I do, I've been there, I've done it. If you're at a farm that has the money, They'll have a pneumatic air gun. You're going to use a rifle. And if you don't want to waste bullets or shells, you're going to use a sledgehammer. And that's more often than not what they use. It is a sledgehammer. Then you hoist them up by one leg, cut their throat, and let them bleed out. That's what happens. It, there's nothing humane anywhere. And if you think that you're hunting and they have this amazingly peaceful death when you come upon their body after you've waited for them to go off and bleed out and die, because that's what you do. Those who don't hunt, you should know. Uh, after you hit your target and they run off, you wait. You don't go anywhere because you don't want to keep scaring them to keep going on and on and try and get away from you. You, let, you wait and you let them go and they get a safe distance away. Then they lay there and they usually bleed out and die. If Joe thinks or anyone thinks that that is some amazingly beautiful and peaceful death, I got news for you. You're going to find out one day and it's not going to be pleasant. I have died. I have died and it fucking hurts. It does not feel good. And that wasn't me getting my throat slit or any other kind of extremely painful, jarring, body destroying pain that these animals experience. Not to mention the fear that leads up to them in a kill line. We're talking about animals that can sense pheromones, that can sense the fear and smell the fear and the death and the blood and everything else in the air. They can smell all of it. That's why they try to turn around so often when they're in the cattle chutes where they don't want to get off the trucks and they have to be beaten to get off because they can smell the fear and the death and the, just, they know, they know. So you're not taking everything into account, not in the least. Let's try and get this finished. Doing, no, no. And I, there are some good uh, cattle ranchers that have good operations. Yes, sure. It's not the factory farm. They're doing it right. And it's like more people are more in tune with that. Like, uh, one of my sons works at a at a meat shop at a grocery store, and he said people ask all the time, "Where's this meat from? How was it raised?" So people are getting yes, and it's like supporting um, ethical cattle ranching. I'm all for that. Me too. That's awesome. That's one of the great things about one of my sponsors is Butcher Box, and mm -hmm. Butcher Box has Box has a, a total commitment to humanely raised animals, hundred percent. And bam, there it is, bought and sold by the animal agriculture. By the by, animal agriculture. Joe Rogan slides in that butcher box. What the fuck is a butcher box? Well, I guess I'm gonna find out because I got to, I get to go look at that. But I assume it's some sort of monthly box where you get sent chopped up body parts in the mail. Isn't it nice how this whole conversation, how he's pretending to be impartial, or he's pretending to be impartial and educated, leads up to him throwing in an advertisement for butcher box. Come on down to butcher box. <laughs> Come on down to Butcher Box. You pay us, we chop them up, throw them in a box, and send them to your house. Apparently, that advertisement was made in the 1800s. 100% grass fed, grass finished beef, no antibiotics, no hormones ever. Mm -hmm. So, they have these relationships with cattle ranchers and they, they use sustainable ranching and sustainable farming. So, when you're buying meat from a good source like that, you're cutting out all the stuff that I hate about, about farming, about, yeah. about factory farming. Me too. Yeah, yeah, they're a good outfit. Well, <laughs> hold on. Well, that's it. That video is just ignorance layered on top of ignorance. And the reality is, like I've said, 
I think Joe Rogan is going to go vegan eventually. And it will be an epiphany. He will act like he's the first person to discover veganism. And he'll be blown away by how he feels. And by not just physically. He'll be blown away by how he feels morally as time goes on. The change is coming for a lot of people. It's just slower than it's, you know, it's just, it's infuriatingly slower for some people than others. And this has been true of changes, civil rights changes across history. Black civil rights, women's rights, LGBTQA civil rights, and other civil liberties. And a lot of that's still, uh, a lot of that's still evolving today with some of the older generation and older people. Slow. Let's wish him the best and try and encourage him towards veganism every chance we get. And maybe, just maybe, we could get him to have Patrick Baboman on his show. Or maybe even the director of the Game Changers. He has people on constantly. It would be pretty awesome for him to get one of them on. I'd love to see both of them go on or maybe a whole host of Olympic athletes from the movie. Any of that would be absolutely amazing. All right, guys. Thanks so much for sitting in on this. This was fun to do. It's something I've been thinking about doing for a while in this kind of style and format. My voice is a little hoarse. <coughs> uh, I'm coming down with a cold or something. But let me know what you think about this style and format of video. All right, guys. I'll see you Wednesday. Love you. Bye.